Okay, I'm working on a sort of a single focus solution for um, uh, my anamorphic lens here. Now I got a M65 um, helicoid and um, I also bought this small uh, wide angle adapter Century Precision wide angle adapter and it's for uh, if I have a thing here. Panasonic DVX 100. So uh, the problem is taking it apart. Now there's a, a ring in here. So there are little tiny holes uh, around the ring here on either side and you can use a, sort of a lens repair tool that uh, fits in those holes and then you can spin it around. The problem is it's very stuck so using all my effort trying to get it in there without stabbing myself I can't I couldn't get it out so uh, I first tried just having it upside down and putting some lighter fluid around the edges there because I could see there's actually some glue or something in there I thought um, and let it sit and then I tried again I still couldn't get it but the best solution is just to heat well my next idea was to just heat the uh, outside lip of this a little bit so hopefully the idea was that this expands and then the inner ring comes loose so that's what uh, I did and it turned quite easily so the problem is I have a, another part the bottom part of this has the same problem so I'm just gonna go uh, do that now so this is the the uh, back part of the lens uh, it's probably like a plus 11 or 12 uh, close-up ring so I'd say plus 12 because I do have a plus um, 10 close-up uh, ring this is a 77 uh, millimeter diameter uh, plus 10 close-up ring and this this one is a little bit closer uh, with my tests I could almost make my it's like I was going to get a smaller one of this to, to fit inside my helicoid. Uh, but really the, the original one is just that much closer so it works that much better. Uh, in a pinch I could get a longer helicoid that's actually a wider one, not so thin. Uh, one of the larger depth ones and the, actually the plus 10 would work um, as well. But I'm just going to try with the... Um, uh, lens thing here to get this out. It's going to measure how big it is first. These are just some work gloves but they're kind of rubberized so they grip a bit better. And when this thing goes flying into my hand it's uh, <laughs> might hurt a little less. So this is, um, I don't know, I can actually see the kind of a glue inside the inside beside these things it's kind of a shiny glue around the edges so I'm not sure if just heating will do or maybe that my um, lighter fluid helped out a bit but anyway I'm really if I if this slips I'm gonna either scratch the glass or go trip to the hospital <laughs> so I'm going to try heating it, but it might be the lighter fluid than the heating after uh, that did it. So let's just try heating it first without the lighter fluid and see if that that will eliminate one step if I don't have to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to place the, uh, the ring side down on the... It's not hot yet, I'm going to turn it on because I don't want to put it on a hot pan right away. Uh, because... I'm just going to put it halfway because it'll just crack the glass and that'll be the end. So, it doesn't have to be like super hot. So I'm just gonna wait a couple minutes here. Okay, the pan's starting to get hot now, just to like touch. I don't wanna put too much on there, so I'm just gonna turn it off. Just put my gloves back on. And try the, the ring again with my tool.
can see the grease has become uh, a lot looser. <sighs> yep, so that's it. So that came undone now. There's there's some glue or some grease or something in there, but that was it. Just, just a little bit of heat. Don't put on very long. Uh, and I didn't put on high or anything. I just put on medium. And then uh, that helps with taking that off. I guess you could probably use a heat gun or something like that, but this is going to evenly like heat the edge here, the outside, and it's going to slowly work its way up. And then it'll eventually, if you do too much, it'll probably heat the inner ring too, and they both expand at the same time. But just uh, take it slow. And once this is heated, the outside's heated up a bit, probably try to try to get to it before the inner ring heats up as well. And uh, that way you can get that out. Okay, so my plan is for this uh, sort of back part to the, uh, the wide angle adapter is to try to stick it inside my uh, helicoid wherever I set it because um, they're almost the same size like uh, there's it won't well let's just take it out I actually don't know what I'm talking about yet till I take it out <laughs> So one side, actually, yeah, one side's quite, quite thick, and the other side's less thick. So the thicker part uh, has to be facing on the inside of the uh, our unit we're going to make, and the thinner part towards just the outside. So that this the out the thinner part's going to go against the uh, the back of the the thing here. So, if we check out our helicoid, you can see it's almost the same size. And actually, if we're really lucky, we can actually take this apart, stick this just on the inner inside of this part here, with the fat part. <laughs> you have to close one eye to take a look at it. The fat part facing uh, inside. Um, so I'm going to try to do that and see what it, uh, what I get. And then basically, from there, this sort of front unit, you, you, I did take it apart, but you don't even have to. It, there's little screws there that you can, uh, it's a point, uh, well, 0 0.9 millimeter uh, hex key to take those out. So it's a very, very thin, thin key. So I suggest uh, buying like a set like this, and it's like the second to last one, 0 0.9 uh, millimeter key to get those little screws out. These are like 10 bucks, these sets, so it's not a big purchase. But the nice thing about this size, it kind of just fits right, right in there. And it's too bad because a little bit more is because there's um, some, a little bit of threads in there. But a little bit more, and those little screws would screw back down in, and then clamp onto this this helicoid. Then you'd have that in between uh, the lens and the other one, and that would be you'd be done. So unfortunately, they're just they're just on the inside of the. There's a little thread in there. Like. Probably could sand this is just plastic, sand that off and then have it stick all the way in and then use those little grub screws to like stick it right on. And then this lens on the inside and that would be it. You're all set. Well, all set. You gotta figure out a way to get this onto the front of your thing. <laughs> onto the front of your adapter, but it's whatever, that that's the easy part. Uh, with step-up rings and, and other things. Um, all right, so I'm going to start taking this apart and see if I can get this uh, other lens inside there first. 
So I took the uh, helicoid apart here and uh, tried the glass and it's like so close but it's not quite there. It's probably like, I don't know, a millimeter too big to slide in there. Uh, so I'm gonna see, my neighbor used to do stained glass and I know she had a glass grinder so I might just um, I asked to borrow that, like just put some like tape over everything, tape it all up with some green masking tape or something, and then just put in the grinder and uh, just take a little bit off the edge of this glass and it might just slide into that helicoid uh, back end. Uh, and if I get it really tight, I can just just put it in by, by sort of suction and maybe a tiny bit of glue around the inside edges just to keep it in there. Um, so yeah, we'll see if I can do that. So I'm just going to remove this uh, for now because I want to fix, I want to do a little bit more of the inside to get it uh, a little tighter on, uh, on the uh, helicoid. So these are 0.9 millimeter grub screws around the outside here. Just gonna put him in a little bit so I don't lose them. Three. They're really quite tight, <laughs> the fit. Which is good. You don't want slipping and stripping these tiny, tiny screws. That should come off there. So actually I've been grinding. It did sort of fit in here, but there was actually threads right near the, the very edge here. Uh, so I grounded out the threads, but I still have to grind them out a little bit more to have it so that it um, actually touches the inside here. There's still about a millimeter or a little less than a millimeter to, to take care of. Uh, to get it closer. The closer the better because that's the, where the uh, infinity focus is going to happen. I'm going to remove the lenses out of here too. So before I do that, just make sure this is tight. Come 
going to see if I have something to put the glass on. Just sew the glasses in there while I'm grinding that. So you're going to want to put your safety glasses on for this. Um, as well for gripping, like even when you're uh, taking out the, the retaining ring, just a, some sort of glove that has a rubber, rubber hands to it uh, helps a lot. Also it protects you uh, even with the, the, the removal thing that uh, if you slip it's gonna you know give you a little bit of protection. So I'm just missing a little bit uh, from the inside here and uh, I found I really like metal cutoff wheels but for grinders and this is a little bit too small but I found this kit that actually has uh, very similar uh, discs but they'll be able to go on the inside for cutting uh, metal. So uh, using a Dremel, you can just work on uh, work. I'm just going to work myself uh, in the inside here. Um, actually, I was thinking I should put like two or three together and put on here. Uh, I still might do that, uh, but we'll just see how this goes for now. Sometimes with your finger, you can feel the uh, if there's a bump that might uh, stop it from going all the way in. But anyway, you can try that one. I can always come back. So this fits nicely on there, and then I can use those little. If I look inside there, I can see that it's uh, snug up against the front of this ring here. So that fits perfectly in there. And those little grub screws are going to be right on this uh, ring here when I tighten them, so they'll, they'll stick onto there. Uh, afterwards. Um, the last sort of thing I have left to do is this is like an M65 uh, I think one millimeter pitch or something. Anyway, it's it's totally not a non-standard. You can't find um, step up or step down rings for it. The closest one would be a 67 which uh, I have actually 67 to 72 attached to a um, 77 down to 67 step down ring because basically what I want is is the 77 um, filter threads to attach to the front of my uh, to attach to the front of my uh, 16d so if I look at this, it almost fits, like you can almost kind of force it on there and it, it stays, but uh, so what I'm going to do, instead of really forcing it on, I'm going to grind off the threads here, off of this side, and uh, since there's no threads on the inside of this, it, it should just sort of slip in there, and I'll probably just put some uh, J-Weld glue or... Um, I guess you'd call it epoxy, JB weld. That's what this stuff is, JB weld. It's basically two-part epoxy. 
Uh, and then just glue that on there, and then that's that's done. That that'll be my uh, a way to fix it to my lens, or to my adapter. And uh, then I'll just test it out and see how it goes. Um, now this is a wide angle, so it um, adds about 30% more to your lens, but the edges are like totally crap. Basically the edges, the way this, this, this lens uh, pulls it out is just kind of, you know, ridiculous. So, uh, We'll see how it goes once I do this, but at least it, it does do. You can do a follow focus with with this uh, with this setup. Now I should have put the did the grinding of the lens before I put that glass in there. That's probably what people are asking or wondering is how you got the glass in there. Uh, basically, it's the rear element. It was the rear element that was inside here and I took it out just with the rings and uh, popped the glass in side here because it's slightly bigger. It's slightly larger than it would fit in this side, but it's smaller than the sort of outside of here. So I, I ground just like a millimeter off the, the very edge of the glass and it just fell inside there. Uh, well, once you take this apart, you move these, there's little screws, uh, Phillips screws that you can remove, and uh, I pop the glass in there, and it sort of stays put. I put a little bit of rubber around it to make it stay put in there, and uh, it does reduce because the glass is in there, like this closes, but it, then it hits the, on the inside hits the glass. So if you wanted to, you could grind it down a bit further, actually stick it in in this part if you wanted to uh, and then you'd have this be able to close even uh, narrower uh, here but well we'll see how the infinity focus goes because that's if you would pop it in here and still have it sticking towards the front element a bit uh, it would probably actually be be better uh, than it is now. So if it doesn't quite reach infinity, I'm not too worried because this is for this is a close-up <laughs> focus adapter. It's for doing the close-ups, like anything from you know 10 feet to goes down to like 40 centimeters, which is like just over a foot. So uh, that's the part that I'll be using it with anyway. So if it's something infinity, I'll just take this thing off and, and use it uh, for infinity. All right, so I'm gonna go grind this off. I really should take this lens out. We'll see if I damage it. It's basically a, a diopter, this back one, of like a plus 11 or plus 12. So you can't actually, you'd have to get a plus 10 and then add a plus 1 to the front of it, like back to back, and stick it in there to get something similar. Maybe like a 60, 67 millimeter, just and grind it down, or a 60, 62, and put it in there with some tape this filler to to bring it out. Actually, I'll measure this and see how... Uh, do I have a little measuring tape here? No, I don't. If I had a measuring tape, I'd, I'll, I'll measure the inside there and tell you how big that is. Okay, so I ground off the, uh, the threads on the outside there. Um, I kind of thought, oh, well, maybe this lip will fit over top of that. It probably would if I if I worked on it a bit more. Um, but really all I wanted was the inside lip to just kind of just fit on that a little bit there. So, um, you know, it's sort of half on. I'd like it fully down in, into there. So it, it, the, the inside thread fits fine. It's like tight there. So I got two options. Uh, do I have two options here? What's, what's holding it back from going all the way in? Oh, it's so close to just sliding further in on top of this. I started grinding it a little bit to do that 
So I may just continue. And that's just going to pop in just a little bit further and uh, make a tighter, uh, tighter fit. Yeah, that'll be nicer. Just an extra two millimeters there uh, for this to slide a fit a bit further in and then glue it. Although I could just glue it now. But it's only half half the inside of this. Because it would be nice that if it was half the inside of this, this back part stuck against this part and end. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that just to make it that much more more connections for uh, for gluing it. So I'm going to continue working on this just to get it all the way in. Okay, so I'm just putting the um, the glass back in, I'm tightening up the uh, retaining ring. Yeah, I'm just going to try to do this without scratching everything. <laughs> it's not perfectly clean, but I know how to take this apart. It's fairly easy. But I like to test it first to see what I'm dealing with. If it's even worth bother cleaning it again, because I may or may not use this, depending on how it works. Okay, so nothing's shaking around. Uh, so this part here, once I clamp those together, there's no going in there again. So, well, there is, but it just means I'm doing these little screws. problem is these are like a little aluminum shreds so I'm just going to scratch the glass if I leave any in there and, or try to clean it. Uh, there we go, it's not too bad. This side looks, I don't know why it looks so good. <laughs> That's fine, I'm happy with that. Stick that on there. Oh. And I did what I didn't mean to do is I didn't put back my great. There it is. Thank goodness. Always, always, always put back the, the thing where it belongs, because there's only one of these, and it's only one thing that fits on here. So 0.9 millimeter hex key. Come on, it's so tiny. I don't want to bend it. But whatever kit this is, it seems like a special kind of metal or something. Uh, anyway, I'm going to put these down for now. What I did want to do once I'm really happy is take them out and put a very thin drill bit and just go in there and make a tiny, just a hole for these to, to go into just so that they end up being flush with the, uh, outside but not strip the screws, or not strip the, so it has to be thinner than the the one millimeter, uh, oh geez, just touch the lens.
Oops. Okay, they are going in. Nothing. again. Maybe with this side better. Or leverage. Yeah, it's going in further now. Okay. working better. They're actually flush now. Okay. So this is probably this is plastic, so it probably they probably are digging in now with a bit more pressure. Yeah, they're flush now, so they're digging into the plastic. So they're not going to come out. Yeah. Good. This one's not quite flush. about okay that's not coming off so last part is to like ground off the uh, the 65 uh, millimeter threads, which don't exist anywhere, <laughs> and that took a 67, uh, and it just sort of fits right over that now. And actually, if I push it in, So that's really snug on there. If I give you a twist, it'll tighten. Right. Yeah, right there, actually, it's tight. Oh. No. So I'll, I'll, we'll have to put some glue on it. But you know what? It's going to be good enough for my test. Now that I touched everything. <laughs> but it's not going to come off for my... <clears throat> for my test with that. So that's pretty nice. So it's a 95 millimeter on the front, so you can attach like a 95 millimeter thread, uh, threaded uh, filter. 
and it's 75 on the back to attach to my, my adapter. The next step is just to test this out and see how it uh, performs. Remember to put your, your hex key away, it's the only one you have. You don't want to pay $14 just for one little hex key. Okay, so this is my uh, anamorphic setup here. Got a 16D on the front. Uh, these are just two step up rings together just so I had enough grip. So it's a 77 to 82 step up and then a 80, 77 to a 72 to 77 step up ring. Anyway, the 77, they, they kind of slide over the front. They just fit, but not enough. Uh, so, so with some gaffer tape, it, they fit on there. But my new thing should just slide into. There. Okay, now it's all pretty front heavy. But that's on there good enough for my test. To bring that forward and backwards. So this has to be brought to near infinity and my taking ones as well. Yeah, so this has to be taped down. Cool. to the other side of the kitchen. I'm not sure if that is infinity or not. So I'm just going to go outside and get a card for this and see how that works. Okay, so I'd like to test this um, outside, but uh, I don't have a neutral density filter that's, uh, that's 95 millimeters. I do have one that's uh, 77, so let's just see here. It's not bringing this closer, I'm actually going to bring that away further because I'm putting this in between. We'll see, is that going to touch the glass? So I'm getting the, to the limit of my uh, my tape here on the front, so I can see that it's moving a little bit. Okay, so that should bring it down by a couple stops anyway. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so this is the small apple at about uh, 20, 25 centimeters away. And then we focus over to the salt, which is about five feet away. So from five feet down to 25 centimeters. 
interesting. So we'll have to do a bokeh test for the, the light bulbs with some light bulbs and let's see if we go past the yeah so that's past the salt which is about 25 feet so from 5 feet to 25 feet it's a very small movement on the uh, I'd say an eighth of a turn on the the helicoid but from the 25 to five, four, four and a half, five feet, it's quite a big turn. Be nice to have a follow focus on it. I have to go twice with my fingers. But man, this works. If you don't look at the edges. <laughs> oh man. Thank you.